What are sea creatures like? Sea creatures come in a wide variety of shapes, sizes, and colors, and can be found in every corner of the ocean, from the shallowest coral reefs to the darkest depths of the abyssal zone. Some of the most common types of sea creatures include Fish Fish are perhaps the most well-known sea creatures, and can be found in a wide range of shapes, sizes, and colors. Some of the most popular fish species include salmon, tuna, swordfish, and clownfish. Sharks Sharks are another popular sea creature, and are known for their sharp teeth and powerful jaws. Some of the most well-known shark species include great white sharks, hammerhead sharks, and tiger sharks. Whales and dolphins Whales and dolphins are both mammals that live in the ocean. Whales are some of the largest animals in the world, and can grow up to 100 feet long. Dolphins are smaller, but are known for their intelligence and playful behavior. Jellyfish Jellyfish are soft-bodied, gelatinous creatures that can be found in almost every ocean in the world. They come in a wide range of sizes and colors, and some species can deliver a painful sting. Octopuses Octopuses are intelligent, eight-armed creatures that are known for their ability to change color and shape. They are also capable of squeezing through very small spaces and regenerating lost limbs. Crabs Crabs are crustaceans that are known for their hard exoskeletons and powerful claws. They can be found in many different habitats, from sandy beaches to deep sea vents. These are just a few examples of the many different types of sea creatures that exist. Each one has its own unique adaptations that help it survive in its particular environment. What color is the sea water? The color of sea water can vary depending on a number of factors such as the depth, the amount of sunlight, the presence of particles or dissolved substances, and the reflection of the sky. In general, Sea water appears blue or green in color, with the hue varying depending on the amount of sunlight and the angle of observation. The blue color of sea water is due to the selective absorption and scattering of sunlight by the water molecules, with longer wavelengths, red, orange, and yellow, being absorbed more strongly than shorter wavelengths, green, blue, and violet. As a result, the blue and green wavelengths are scattered more and are more visible to our eyes. However, the color of sea water can also appear different in certain areas, such as near the shore, where the water may be influenced by sediments, organic matter, or pollutants. Additionally, in certain parts of the world, such as the Caribbean, the water may appear a more turquoise color due to the reflection of the sky and the presence of coral reefs. How do ocean volcanoes form? Ocean volcanoes, also known as underwater volcanoes or seamounts, form through a process called seafloor spreading. Seafloor spreading is the process by which new oceanic crust is created at mid-ocean ridges, where tectonic plates are pulling apart. As magma rises to the surface, it cools and solidifies, forming new crust. However, if the magma reaches the surface, it can erupt and form a volcano. Underwater volcanoes can form either at mid-ocean ridges, where the magma reaches the surface through fissures in the crust, or on the flanks of the ridges, where the crust is thinner and more easily breached by the magma. Over time, the accumulated layers of volcanic rock and sediment can form a seamount, which can rise thousands of meters above the seafloor. Some seamounts can even breach the ocean surface, forming islands or atolls. In addition to seafloor spreading, ocean volcanoes can also form at hotspots, which are areas of the seafloor where magma rises from deep within the Earth's mantle. As the tectonic plates move over the hotspot, new volcanoes are formed, creating chains of islands or seamounts. Overall, ocean volcanoes play an important role in the geologic history and biologic diversity of the ocean, and are still being studied by scientists to better understand their formation and evolution. How do storms occur in the ocean? Storms in the ocean, such as hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones, are formed through a complex process that involves a combination of warm water, moist air, and atmospheric conditions. The process begins with the warm ocean water, which provides the energy needed for the storm to develop. As the sun heats the ocean, the water evaporates, creating warm, moist air that rises and begins to cool. As the air cools, the moisture in the air condenses, forming clouds. This process releases heat, which causes the air to rise even more. As the warm, moist air rises, it creates an area of low pressure, which draws in more air from the surrounding area. This air is also warm and moist, and it begins to rise as well. 
As the warm air continues to rise, it cools and condenses, releasing even more heat, which fuels the storm. At the same time, the rotation of the Earth causes the air to rotate around the area of low pressure, creating a spinning motion. As the storm grows larger and more intense, the winds can reach speeds of up to 100 miles per hour or more, creating massive waves and surges of water known as storm surges. Overall, the process of how storms occur in the ocean is a complex interaction between the ocean, the atmosphere, and the Earth's rotation. While scientists have made significant progress in understanding the formation and behavior of these storms, there is still much to learn about their dynamics and impact on the ocean and the planet as a whole. Can one go deep into the ocean? Yes, it is possible to go deep into the ocean, but it is a challenging and dangerous endeavor that requires specialized equipment and training. The ocean is divided into different zones based on depth, and each zone presents its own unique challenges and risks. The shallowest zone is the sunlight zone, which extends from the surface down to a depth of about 200 meters, 656 feet. This is the zone where photosynthesis can occur, and where most marine life is found. Below the sunlight zone is the twilight zone, which extends from a depth of about 200 meters down to around 1,000 meters, 3,281 feet. In this zone, the light is too faint for photosynthesis to occur, and the pressure is much greater than at the surface. In order to explore this zone, specialized submersibles or remotely operated vehicles, ROWs, are required. Deeper still is the midnight zone, which extends from a depth of about 1,000 meters down to the seafloor. In this zone, there is no sunlight at all, and the pressure can be over 100 times greater than at the surface. Only a few manned submersibles have been able to reach the depths of the midnight zone, and even then, they are only able to explore for short periods of time due to the extreme conditions. Going deep into the ocean is a dangerous and challenging endeavor that requires specialized equipment and training. However, it can also provide valuable insights into the ocean's ecosystem, geology, and resources, and is an important area of scientific research.